Well, hello there. I'm Taryn. Well, first of all, thank you for buying my tutorial. Uh, for the entire duration of that following session, I would imagine that you're sitting right next to me. And uh, just to make it a little bit more easy for you, I'll uh, you know show you this, all this. Um, uh, you know, one of the most important things about organic modeling, or any modeling for that matter, is that you're relaxed and focused. Relaxed and focused while you're doing that. You know, not tense and focused. So uh, one of the main reasons, uh, 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 you know, that that we ha we want to get rid of and we have to get rid of is the tool itself. So in other words, the tool should not be in the way. Uh, to accomplish that, we have one great advantage. We will only be using very few tools, not not too many tools, not too many, I mean, features in that case. So I will show you what these features do, and you should find the way the application you are using is doing them, and then hook them to hotkeys. I will be using Lightwave, but you should be able to follow along with anything Maya, Max, you know, uh, Modo, doesn't matter, especially Modo is no problem whatsoever. So, uh, uh, lay them out first, and then we proceed with the, you know, remainder of the secrets of organic modeling. All right, let's go. So, let's have a look at the features we're going to be using. I've prepared the sidebar <coughs> to display all of the features that we're going to be using. Uh, in fact, it, it displays even more uh, than we're going to be using. But uh, I've prepared this little block to add the little extra features we're, that'll be in there. So, for instance, uh, you know, we have a box primitive. And although I'm just going to make one box in the very beginning and then never again, it's still in there just so the list is complete. And uh, let's center that. F2 centers it. See, every of these buttons has a little shortcut uh, displayed, and that's what I'm going to be using. This means, for instance, Control T, and the lowercase means you know, just the key T, so and so forth. Plus T would be Shift T, and so forth. So um, uh, we're going to have uh, your uh, symmetry mode. So the symmetry mode is very, very important. It's like a foundation. Uh, in Lightwave, the symmetry is made uh, is done over the uh, world's center axis, so everything you do on the right side will be mirrored to the left side. So now, if I have nothing selected, that would mean I move everything. But because there's only one polygon completely on the right side, if I move around, see it gets mirrored over to the other side. Whatever action I do, same goes for rotate. All right, so. Symmetry mode. And then for the selection, we have a polygon selection. And we have a point selection. And we have an edge selection. Yes. Lightwave 9 has now edges. That's just uh, pretty, but I'm not really used to it. In fact, I don't even need it much. It's, it comes in handy here and there, but uh, for the most of the time, I don't think we're, we're going to use it. Um, at least not in this uh, tutorial, it's not going to be necessary. So for the polygon selection, there are a few more nice features, and that would be, for instance, to expand the selection. Expand, contract, expand, contract. So those uh, features, uh, that, that feature is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, if you want to select an area of interest, then you want to, well, of course, you know, just... Uh, you just have to click in on one polygon in that area and then expand the selection and you get the surrounding. Very, very handy. It comes in handy very often. Same goes for points, of course. You, know, you pick one point because we have symmetry on it, picks you know, the respective mirror point, expand the selection, and then we have all the points selected. And if we have all the points selected, we can't contract anymore because it wouldn't even know where to. But that doesn't matter. What matters is Good feature, expand and contract. Um, what does it do with edges? Probably it's going to be interesting. Yeah, with edges. It's still kind of neat. All right. So, uh, yes. Now the sub patch, formerly known as meta nerps, those sub patches, they give us a real time preview and. Uh, uh, almost more than that, of our subdivided cage while we are still working on the lowest cage. 
See, I tweaked the low risk cage and it shows us the subdivided result. Uh, I have the sub patches set to uh, six divisions, which is decent enough. We don't need to go higher than that. So, um, and in the perspective viewport, uh, I think by default, it would show the cage and it would show guides. Uh, but they become very soon distracting. So I usually turn them off. You know, if you have hundreds of polygons, I mean, those, those things are, they just, uh, almost occlude the, the actual geometry underneath the actual, actual model. So let's turn those off again. And the same goes for the grid. Since we're doing organic modeling, we don't quite need, you know, any kind of uh, real reference, you know, to the rest of the world, so to say. And there are not going to be any kind of wacky precision moves, really. Um, so we don't need the grid and don't let it distract us. If uh, usually when I work, uh, I most of the time have just smooth shade turned on because that shows pretty much the object, how it would look uh, when it was rendered. But just so you, it's easier for you to uh, f uh, follow along and uh, to see what's happening with the topography. I'm going to keep it on wireframe shade for most of the time. So what else do we have? Okay, so let's say we have polygon selection. Whenever I hit, you know, and whenever was, and whenever I was in some kind of feature like move or something like that, to get into selection mode, I usually just hit space and then you go there. If you would continue to hit space, it would toggle through the selection mode. But that's not as relevant. I often actually go directly there with the respective shortcut, like control H in that case, give me polygons. Control G would give me points. So yeah, I, I use that a lot too. So. Let's pick a polygon and move it around. All right, let's move. And then there's rotate and stretch. But the thing about rotate and stretch is what I have is I use the mouse pointer as my pivot. That is a very, very helpful uh, way, uh, like a very, very useful way of working, especially in organic modeling. We don't have to do any kind of, uh, you know, um, your precision moves where you need to be uh, exactly in the center of your selection or anything like that. In fact, it would be rather distracting. Although in light review, you easily can do that. I'm just hitting shift F8, F8, I mean <laughs> F8. And then it would always use the center of your selection because it is symmetry mode is turned on. Um, the left side gets completely disregarded. That's why the center of the selection is just the center of the selected polygon on the right side. But we don't use that because it really doesn't, it, it just restricts what we can do with, with stretch and rotate. So shift F5 brings us back to the mouse pointer as our pivot. And we can do some very nice and intuitive, uh, rotating and stretching. It's very helpful, especially because of the symmetry, because we can make use of it to do, for instance, several things at once, you know. It's very nice. Very, yeah, it becomes very intuitive very quickly. And uh, also, uh, same goes for then using stretch in the in the perspective viewport. Let's show it to you like that. Like for instance, if I wanted this polygon to be flat like that, see, then I would just go into the perspective viewport and do it over here. You get to use some very complex changes. And without having to worry about, uh, you know, orientation or anything else. So it's very easy. Also because we use the mouse pointer as pivot, again, we can do a lot of intuitive things here directly, very quickly. So it's super helpful. So mouse pointer as pivot for stretch and rotate. What else do we have? So we have um, the extender plus. Of all the key features, this is the number one key feature, uh, right after symmetry, which would be zero then. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, so extend, the extender plus is uh, an extrusion type of tool or, a, you know, some, some other applications might have it as a kind of a bevel type of tool or uh, in the former versions of Lightwave, this was called uh, uh, super shift and before then it was called smooth shift. Now the extender plus is really the distilled down solution to what you wanted to do with that. Um, it's hooked to shift F. So every time I hit shift F, plops, it does that. 
what it does is it in essence kind of extrudes the selected polygon and creates new geometry around that polygon as you can see see this is the polygon we've extended and these are the new polygons this action oops, this action has created now the interesting thing about that is that it does that by leaving the polygon as it is like for instance right now if i would hit extender plus you wouldn't see that anything has happened so let me use stretch right after that and then you can see it has created new geometry there we go so and that's what we're going to do a whole lot of times because that way every t every tweak we do we do consciously you know if you were to for instance use any kind of tool that automatically uh, uh, kind of like extrudes polygons out of your mesh uh, that would end up uh, with some rather involuntary kind of tweaks and so it's really best to do it like that select your polygon hit extender plus and then do the tweaks whatever you want to do uh, the only wacky thing now in Lightwave 9, as I have found out, which was rather funny, I wanted to hook it to a shortcut and had to find out that there are two, two extender tools. And they are both just called extender and not extender plus. So for instance, if you were to look for it in your commands, you know, you search for extend, and it gives you the extender number one, which is in additional commands. And that's not the one we use. We are looking for the next one, which is in Modeler Tools. So the extender in Modeler Tools. Hook that to a shortcut. I have it on Shift F. I like it there. Um, you might want to put it wherever you want to, but that's what I recommend. So, uh, all right. So let's let's just create some some more geometry here, just for just for fun. There, pick a few polygons, extender plus, and stretch. Bring it into new position there, ta-da! And now let's do something else, and that would mean topographical changes, tools to help with altering the topography. So what we've got there, for example, is well, this is kind of a stupid geometry to show that right now. Uh, right, let me do this. Let me extend one more time. Ta-da, ta-da, like that. So. Spin quads. What spin quads does is it rotates the split edge between two quads, two polygons that are made out of four points each, four vertices each. So if I hit spin quads, it does this. See? It rotates the way those two polygons are split. Now let's look just at those two polygons in flat shaded and, uh, you know, not sub patched face view. And you can see how the edge that separates them both gets rotated through the different points that could separate it while they always stay quads. Now if you do not have that feature in your tool what you can do is you just hit merge to merge those two polygons and then split them along an axis that would turn both of them back into quads just along a different axis. Merge, different axis you want to use, there, split and there we go. Spin quads does it all automatically. Just watch out when you have to do that manually. If you did have to do that manually, which would be very sad, uh, that you don't do something like this, which would turn those two polygons into one triangle and one n egg, which is with five vertices. We really, really do not want that. Um, we always want to stay in quads, and it happens automatically, so you never have to worry about that as long as we stick with that method. There we go. The other thing, although it always looks a, a little bit broken, uh, is that we can turn off sub patches in Lightwave per polygons. Uh, so if we can have polygons selected and turn off the sub patches there, that can come in handy if you know if you do want to kind of like uh, you know see where the actual points are uh, sitting temporarily, just very quick, you know, just for orientational purposes. And you can do some tweaks, you know, for instance, you know, like so, and uh, and you know turn on and off the uh, sub patches at any time. Very handy, very handy. Because we always want to uh, also have, you know, get a feeling for our geometry. We don't want to lose a feeling for that. All right. So that's some kind of funny bone, <laughs> whatever, that is 
quads, uh, spin quads, and I use spin quads in in many ways, not just to you know just alter the topography like that, but also sometimes to uh, optimize my geometry. For instance, uh, uh, most of the time the idea is to create a very smooth flow of the edges. So, for instance, here right now we see a break in that flow. Let's say you know we want to follow this edge, and this looks almost like an open wound there. So let's pick two polygons, spin the quads until we have that edge continue through. And then we get one redundant polygon over here. This construction actually is two quads. But if we merge them, we have just one quad. And that's what we want in that case. Same here. Spin quads, merge, and there we go. So this optimizes the geometry quite a bit. What this also creates or generates is it creates redundant points, points that are connected to no geometry. What we can do there is we use the point statistics, deselect all of the points just to make sure we didn't, you know, uh, overlook a, a selected polygon point. And then we select all of the points that are collect connected to zero polygons. Plus, and delete them. Go on. So now everything is neat and clean again. So the other thing we have is a truly wacky tool and it's a really neat trick to really get to some very nice topography to a very uh, yeah, interesting uh, yeah, uh, new way uh, geometry is uh, formed and that is called collapse po po polygons, collapse polygons. So what we do for that is we hit extend and collapse polygons. This gives us a whole bunch of triangles, which we then merge back into individual quads. So out of three polygons, I've made four polygons. In that case, out of three quads, I've made four quads. And that comes in handy very, very often. In fact, it's one of those, I almost like to call them magic tools, because there are places where you start to wonder, oh my god, how am I going to well, how do I for instance, get rid of this star, you know? Of course, this is a very easy one. You could just go ahead and just do spin quads and you've got it already reduced by one edge and then you could go ahead and do it again. And then you have basically no star here anymore. So you can see that would, you know, translate to other locations, but it ends up being prettier than it used to be. And another way of tackling that is again with that collapse polygon method. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the most interesting mesh to really show that off. But, you know, let's, for instance, do that over here. Extend, collapse polygons. I have that actually hooked to F4. You can see that over here. And then merge polygons. And there we've got a new different topography. Like so. Let's be quads. Here. All right. Uh, so then we've also got some master, oh, well, like master, <laughs> uh, larger deformation tools as opposed to drag points, which I so love, uh, and move or rotate or stretch. We have all of these, and especially rotate, stretch, and move with a fall off area. So that means that we don't just move around the whole thing, but we can use the tool called magnet which allows us to define a falloff area with our right mouse button. And with our le left mouse button, we then just drag or move the, you know, the geometry by, you know, with the influence based on the center of our, uh, you know, select area and a falloff area. And the same goes for stretch, but there it's called pull two. And we select our area of influence and then can stretch and right now here, for instance, I'm just doing a two-dimensional selection. That means for the other axis, it just extends to infinity. But we can confine that too, you know, by selecting our area here. And then you can see what happens. Only that area gets influenced. It's very beautiful for larger scale tweaks, you know, if we want to do larger design changes and such. There. And the same goes for rotate, and there it's called vortex. All the same stuff. Ta -da. Yeah, I use those quite a bit, actually. So. Okie dokie. 
So you might want to set up all these tools and hook them to hotkeys. And you might have to go back, you know, just to look through it one more time, just to make sure that you have all of that stuff laid out. Yeah, this is what we're going to be using. And yeah, I could show you all of this a little bit in action for a second, just for fun. Uh, yeah. Let's use, for instance, that stretch tool. Ta -da. Extend, move, stretch. Extend, move. And uh, yeah, let's pick some polygons right here on the sides. Extend, stretch, stretch, there. Spin quads. Extend, collapse, merge. Ah, oh, we can do the same thing here. Extend, collapse, merge. And you can see how that alters the topography right away. It's a very entertaining way of modeling, really. Trust me. It's fun. <laughs> what is that? Uh, never mind. All right. Yeah. What we can do here, extend, stretch, drag points. This is the most common way we use it. Extend, stretch, and drag points. Happens very, very often. Stretch from the side view, you know. Extend, stretch, rotate. And rotate. Extend, stretch, in all of the viewports, you know, piece by piece. Extend, stretch, extend, oh, undo, redo. And stretch a little bit and rotate a little bit. And there you go. This is how it can be used. So don't worry, this is not our modeling session. We're still in the preparation. I mean, I shouldn't hold you back for much longer from, you know, doing your uh, preparations because you should definitely do your preparations right now. And I'm going to, uh, you know, do everything to distract you in the meantime by doing all this nonsense, just to give you a little bit of an idea what it would be like, what, what it will be like to model like that. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Spin quads. <laughs> yeah. See, spin quads. You can see how the, you get a very fluent uh, edge flow in there very quickly. It's very easy. You can model all sorts of nonsense that way. And it's actually way too much fun. I love letting the geometry tell me what it wants to be. That's, that's one of those things. But I shouldn't waste much more time. Um, and we should get right to it. See, spin quads. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Ah, one more thing uh, bef before I forget, actually. Oh, God, it's too much fun. Ah, I see, for instance, here, I say expand selection, and it gives me that entire, what would that be, like a horn? <laughs> and I'm going to use perspective to rotate my geometry to where I want it. Let's say, for instance, stretch, and then extend. Stretch it small again. It's a silly example, of course. Contract selection, rotate, extend, rotate. You know, nonsense. So, but as you can see here now in the viewport, I have the wires, uh, wireframe shade turned on, and but only with a smooth shade, you can actually see what's happening here. Uh, I mean, you you get a much nicer preview of your geometry. That's why I like that. And I often just uh, leave it like that and select the area that I'm interested in, the polygons of that area, to see the topography there temporarily. Just, you know, temporarily. And that's that. No. He. Mm hmm. Yo. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, goofing around this is uh, another key feature. <laughs> ah, yeah, and see also other use of using spin quads to really just alter the topography. All right, but this is not our tutorial. 
this is just the preparation. All right, so get ready and then let's go into the main part of the secrets of organic modeling.